So you've probably seen this already, the, um, the homepage. And I got myself a nice new banner up there, uh, John's, uh, Prof. John's Critical Thinking Canvas homepage. Um, so an important thing for you guys to know is that um, under here, up at the top under announcements, uh, it says week one and two are published. Uh, well, I always have a week ahead of the week that we're on to, to be published. And that's so that people, if they want to work ahead, uh, they can go ahead and work ahead. I don't want them working too far ahead. Uh, but if you if you uh, get on top of things and say you have to be, you know, you have to be busy the next week or something, you could you could go ahead and spend the extra time that it took to uh, to work ahead in the schedule. So on the Friday, like this coming Friday, what I'll be doing is I'll be putting up an announcement that uh, week number three is published. And uh, if I forget that, or if I, you know, if it gets to be Saturday and it's not up there, uh, please email me and let me know that I forgot to do it. Usually I have it in my calendar to remind me. So usually I'm pretty good about putting that up. Um, generally, I don't use announcements uh, uh, that much, um, uh, but if there's something like comes up in the news or something, I want you guys to check it out, or, or I think that it's uh, important to, that's related to something that we're working on in the class, I might, I might throw up an announcement and, and see if, if somebody might uh, see it and, and respond to it. But uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, certainly not anything mandatory goes on up there. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, the uh, front page, uh, generally speaking, your things that are up and due, you'll see they're over here. And this is now this is the instructor view that you're seeing here. Um, but things that are due, they'll, repeat, they'll show up over here on the right hand side. But I really want people to be aware of the fact that the best way to work through uh, any uh, Canvas or online course is to go to the modules and to work through it point by point by point. Now, as I say in the modules under one of the one of the elements or so, um, it's really important that um, you do it systematically, that you go point by point by point, element by element by element, because they build on each other. So if you skip something, then it's, it's, there's a possibility that you're not gonna know something you need to know in order to be successful with whatever you do next. So make sure that you're going through uh, the modules in a systematic way. So um, uh, there's a, an extra credit here, your first extra credit is available to do an analytical critique of this. And you'll see that when we get to the modules where it shows up. So what I'd like you to do is to go through this and check out the links I have here on civil, obedience, civil disobedience and, and powerful people. An um, important section of it is communication with me. Um, of course, uh, if you're here, you know how to do that. Uh, you do that here in the Zoom app. Uh, so, um, so, um, I'm just getting a text here. I wanted to see it. But uh, so um, that's uh, an important thing to know about, because if you need help with any particular thing, uh, then we can set up an individual Zoom, you know, just uh, you and me uh, meeting. Uh, and usually I set up Zooms generally around midday, around 1130 or 12. Uh, or in the uh, afternoon around 3.30 or 4, uh, whatever uh, works in your schedule. Actually, I say that right there. Um, and uh, this is how you connect up. The other way to connect with me is, is through my cell phone. This isn't my actual cell phone number. It's a Google voice phone, which connects up through this number to my cell phone. So you could call me here if there's something you know pressing, you know, you ought to turn something in right away. Uh, you'll either connect to me directly, I'll pick up, or I'll get a message and then I can call you right back and we can connect up that way. Um, the email system, just a, a few words about that. If you email me, uh, make sure, and you got a question, Make sure that you're very specific about exactly what you need, uh, because lots of times people will email me and they'll ask me something, and I really don't know what assignment they're talking about or, or what, what they actually need, and I'll try and figure it out, and I'll answer the wrong thing, and so it gets to be very confusing. So if there's something kind of complex that you need an answer to, you can do it by email, but you have to be very specific about what your needs are. That way I can answer what you actually need and not something else that I think you need. Um, if it's a simple little question, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, just email me and I'll get right back to you. Of course, what I want you to do is I want you to use the Canvas email system. Don't use the Peralta email that I have. Use email me from within Canvas because that way I'll be able to uh, respond to you right away. I'm extremely conscientious about getting back to students over email. 
if you email me, you know, I check my email in the evening, I check it in the morning, I check it during the day. So I'll get back to you right away. If you have a question or if you have a concern or you want to let me know something, uh, then I will respond to you uh, very uh, promptly. And of course, the email, you'll find it over here in the left hand panel. It's this is the inbox for the email. And then the last uh, way for us to connect up is through this chat tool. You can see over here the chat. And that's like a synchronous, meaning same time thing where uh, you're there, I'm there. And that way there's no misunderstanding. If you chat something and I need clarification, I can chat right back to you. We can get, do this back and forth thing. And so that's a way for us to set up something. Uh, but of course we have to arrange for that. So it gets a little complicated that way. You don't have to say, oh, let's get together for a chat at a particular time. So in that situation, it might just be just as easy to do a Zoom. So, but it's, it's a tool that's available to us. So down here, how to start the course, class orientation module, the modules link, click on here, uh, or in the upper left-hand portion to go to the modules. Of course, down here at the bottom, there's some how-to guides on Canvas tutorials. There's a whole slew of them down here. They're extremely good about teaching you how to do what you need to do from within this uh, learning modality, the Canvas learning modality. So uh, having taken a look at the front page, I'm gonna move on to then the modules. So I'm clicking on the modules in the upper left hand corner. So let's take out uh, the video library first. I've got a whole bunch of videos up here that I think you might be interested in. Some of them are actually a part of the course, others are not. So um, depending on your interests, like this one, the revolution will not be televised. I wonder if that's still available. Uh, yeah, it is because this is a great video on an uh, attempted coup in Venezuela. Um, uh, and uh, periodically they take it off of YouTube. Uh, so I wanted to just see if it was still there. But a whole bunch of videos here uh, sort of related to the theme of the course, which is um, uh, social justice. And so um, uh, take a look if you're interested. Um, I know it's a lot of extra time to watch some of these videos, but uh, I think that you may be interested in some of these. So. Uh, check them out if you get a chance. So those are the full length videos, uh, student orientation resources and support. Um, here's a Peralta Canvas orientation, uh, student uh, Peralta student resources and support. These are from the Peralta district. Um, now these down here, these are from me. Um, uh, how to get support from me. Um, uh, some of the things that I say on the front page, Canvas in this class. I would like you to take a look at that if you get a chance. Um, who is this Prof John, Prof John uh, dude anyway? Here you're going to find out about my past. Uh, here's a picture of my wife and I when we were hippies back in the late 60s, 70s. And uh, Prof John's story, I've uh, got a rather checkered past. I went back to school when I was 45 as a high school dropout. Uh, so I uh, went through a lot of interesting experiences. I did a lot of drugs and alcohol. I uh, was, uh, was a political activist. Uh, I had a lot of different things that I did in my past that are quite interesting. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can. And here, my, I'm introducing my wife, Mary. Uh, that's her up here when she was younger. And she wanted to say hello. So you get a chance to say hello to Mary. We've been together for over 50 years. So uh, a great story on our relationship. For those of you who uh, are uh, interested in long-term relationships, this is a, an inspiration to you. Okay, uh, then there's some stills of Mary and me. And uh, this is my welcome video, uh, expectations for the class, how I work extra credit in your final grade. Can I turn an assignment late? And I put this in caps because people are always asking me this over the course of the semester. And I get an email, 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 email. Can I turn this in late? Can I turn that in late? Well, you know, you know what you can do late because it says it right here. Uh, it says that you can turn in things late. Due dates are generally flexible. The only time they aren't is when it says that the due date is firm. And I say that right on the assignment itself. And there aren't that many of those. Uh, there's a, usually a particular reason that I do that. Um, the uh, only issue with the turning things in late, especially if it's a major assignment, is you're not going to get comments on it. No deductions for it. 
but I'm just going to grade it because I set the time aside to grade things. And if you turn it in late, uh, then I don't have that extra time uh, then to put a lot of comments on it. I will read it carefully and I will grade it uh, carefully, but I won't put comments on it. Uh, if you turn it on time, then you're going to get a much more of a rich learning experience out of it. Of course, if you, are, if you turn it in late and you don't get comments on it and you want to talk about it, then you can do a Zoom. So there's always that. So uh, that's, uh, so I try to sprinkle that around. For example, on week number one, I put it on the first one. Week number two, three, can I turn in assignment late so people see it? So this is an important one for you. Screenshots of all the weekly modules. Oh no. Oh, it's good that I know this. I wonder if it would download. Bad gateway. Wonder what the heck that is, huh? Okay, I will, uh, I'll put this up again and make sure that I get a clean gateway, <laughs> whatever that is. Because what this is, is it's screenshots of all your modules for the whole semester. So you get a chance to look through them, the ones that aren't published yet. So you get to take a look at the semester and what it entails. And so um, uh, take a look back at this if you're interested and, and I will have it fixed um, uh, shortly in terms of uh, getting that up and I'll, I'll double check to make sure it's, it works. So good that we uh, checked that out, so I found out. So hopefully I don't have a bad gateway to your syllabus. No, got a good gateway. Okay, so um, here is uh, the URL to my website, which I don't really use anymore, but you can always check it out if you wanted to. There's a lot of interesting stuff on there. A lot of stuff that's in the course itself uh, comes off of that website. But I talk a lot about uh, critical thinking here, um, uh, what it is, um, and uh, uh, what uh, critical thinking is down here, the components of critical thinking, identifying and challenging assum assumptions, recognizing the importance of context, reflective skepticism, imagining exploring alternatives, revising assumptions. Those are very interesting ways that Brookfield decided uh, critical thinking is important. I personally think that critical thinking really revolves around being thinking, uh, thinking about how we got where we are now. What is it about um, our past that uh, creates the environment that we're in now, creates our present? Uh, you know, generally speaking, a lot of people say that in order to know who we are, we need to know uh, our past. And so a lot of this course revolves around um, critical thinking about how we got where we are. So there's a lot of political reading, there's a lot of historical reading, um, and it uh, opens your eyes in terms of how things got the way they are in, in, in the United States of America. Um, so by the end of this course, this, these are the learning outcomes for the course. Um, and I want you to read this as part of your, uh, uh, you know, uh, reading the uh, syllabus itself. Um, and uh, I mentioned respect here. It's an important part of the uh, uh, environment in college. Um, discussion posts, I really emphasize discussion posts. Now, since I started teaching um, online, the grade uh, percentage for discussion posts has gone up and up and up. Uh, and it's now a, a major part of your grade. And uh, it's a, a really great way to critically think about things that you have read. And so I have some a very interesting uh, post assignments that are there for you. Uh, it's really important that you actually respond to the post assignment. Um, oftentimes it's really good to look at the discussion post assignment before you actually um, read the reading or the uh, videos that are uh, that the discussion post is based on. That way you'll know you know what, where to uh, annotate, uh, what to focus on in terms of your discussion post. Um, so essays, uh, you get one revision per semester, academic integrity, don't plagiarize. Um, and this is the way the grades are broken down. Of course, you see 50% for your discussion post. That's a really big part of your grade. Any questions on the syllabus? I noticed that some more people have uh, joined the, uh, the Zoom. No questions? Okay, how to dis in that module. So here are the Canvas tutorials. I might have mentioned them from the front page, but these are, these are specific ones that I think may be more useful to you 
um, in terms of uh, you know what we're doing in this class. How to resources from Prof. John. Um, these are some really important resources for you. This is a really critical one for your discussion post because when you do your discussion post, you need to introduce the authors in the articles using these patterns. So I do have that. Some of these things are actually in the modules themselves. I sort of repeat them here um, so that you have them in two different places in case you need to access them again and you don't you can't really look through the modules. This gives you kind of a shortcut to them. Um, uh, so, like for the anatomy of a college level, uh, level argument essay, uh, how to organize your essays, all of these things are down in the uh, general modules as well, the weekly modules. Uh, proofreading abbreviations. Um, I, sometimes I may put a, an abbreviation in the margin on something about an error in, uh, in it. Generally speaking, when you get to uh, English 5, you're supposed to have quite a bit of your errors taken care of in previous English classes. Generally, I find that people I uh, have quite a few errors still. Uh, so uh, I may be directing you towards some proofreading exercises that you can actually clear, clear up some of those errors that you have that are extra credits at the end of our uh, modules. And you'll see those down at the end of the module. Um, but that's, uh, those are the abbreviations. Now the Prof. John tutorials, these are uh, tutorials that I spent a whole lot of time making sure that you knew how to do everything that you need to do in this course, uh, mainly technically, you know, with the interface between Canvas and your computer and Google Docs and Word uh, and all of those different things. Uh, hopefully all of you know that you do have my, uh, access to Microsoft Word as an American College student. You don't have to go out and get a standalone app you can get it from your Outlook email program, and this shows you how to get it from there. Um, all of these things are tutorials that, you know, you see my little picture there, but I, uh, I walk you through all the different things that you need to do in order to do these things. Uh, so um, make sure you check them out. Uh, you know, just sort of take a run through these to see that, uh, to get it in your mind what's here. And then when it comes time to, for you to do it, um, you can, um, uh, know that they're here and you can check it out. Uh, extra credit module early. So uh, if you just email me within the Canvas system, then you'll get a 10 points. Um, if you get uh, put your personal picture profile in there, you get another 10 points. You know, I, I kind of emphasize this because we do a lot of discussions and there's a lot of back and forth communication. And if you see your picture, if we see each other's pictures, it really helps us to kind of get a sense for who's doing what in, uh, uh, in the discussion or whatever it happens to be. And when, if you do that in order to get credit for it, it has to be a close up of your face. Now, if you put a, a long shot of your body standing across the, you know, the parking lot, uh, then it's not really gonna help anybody uh, see anything. So uh, if you do a close up of your face, you got 10 points. Uh, this is another uh, introduction uh, optional. A personal introduction, analytical critique. On the front page, uh, there's a, a really cool painting uh, that you can actually see the paintings from the uh, Soul of the Nation. Uh, all of, uh, many of the paintings that I thought were interesting at the end of, your, of this, uh, of all of the different weekly modules. Uh, but this is one of them that if you decide that you want to use, apply some critical thinking to a critique of it, you can and get 15 points of extra credit. And then you can talk about critical race theory and get some extra points on that too. Does anybody know what critical race theory is? No? Okay, well, I'll just keep going. Uh, so uh, week number one, uh, first thing we're gonna be working on is um, a song. And here's uh, uh, Dave Matthews singing the song. It's one of the, uh, it's a really great rock and roll tune. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time listening to it. To change the world. So it's about changing the world, as you can see, just from the first uh, few words in it. And then down below, I have the words, or I have the words somewhere. probably in the next element.
Uh, where are those words? You can probably put it on me. There they are. Yeah, it's in the discussion post. These are the words that you're going to be working on. So you need the words here to do the discussion. And here are the words on the actual song. And this is your first discussion post. So I have a lot of different instructions on what you need to do. Um, a little word on the discussion post since we're here now, uh, having looked for the words. Um, you need to respond uh, to two of your classmates within 48 hours in order to get uh, to avoid a two point deduction for that particular post. So um, if you get an eight out of 10, that may be the reason that usually I'll try to put a comment in there that that's why. But what I'll do is uh, once you post, I'll wait to grade it until the third day after you post and then uh, and, and make sure it's a, a worthwhile uh, point that you're making. Don't just say I agree. and. Uh, and then uh, on the third day, then I uh, can give you credit for doing getting the full 10 points or more. If, if I find that it's a really good post, I'm going to give uh, extra, extra points if it's a really good post. So uh, when, before you do your first discussion, make sure that you uh, get on track for exactly how to do discussions. So um, I work on annotation. Annotation is a critical skill. Um, back when I was doing face-to-face -face classes, I, you know, I would bring in huge piles of, of uh, reading material for students because I would do production of it. I didn't have anybody buy any books. And so th in that situation, I just told people, I taught them how to annotate you know, with a pencil in your hand. But now that we're doing online, uh, then what you need to do is you need to um, uh, you know, find a way to annotate electronically. And so I teach you how to do that, and I have a quiz on it. Uh, here. So this teaches you how to uh, do that particular thing. So, and then there's a quiz to show me that you can do it, that you get points for. And then to, for the first part of this course, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing, uh, or we're going to be uh, learning about uh, the terms of argument and uh, fallacies. And uh, so um, this is kind of a part of uh, kind of the dry part of of critical thinking that is a requirement that we cover uh, uh, so that students are aware of those particular issues. So um, what I do is I have a, a, a handout on terms of argument. It's a rather lengthy handout. I ask you to read and annotate it. And then uh, eventually there's going to be a, um, an, a, a midterm on that particular handout. So uh, you know, annotating for those points that are important is going to be uh, uh, critical for you. Of course, it's uh, because we've got an online environment here, um, we're gonna, it's an open book uh, exam. So once you do the exam itself, you'll be able to actually look up the answers and, and put the answers in. But in the exam itself, I, I require that you not just sort of give the answer off the top of your head, but give the answer out of what you learned or found in the, uh, the handout itself on terms of argument. Um, so, uh, and then after, of course, we do the midterm, uh, then um, we're going to get involved in the really fun part of the class, or at least I think it's fun, the essay. So uh, uh, then we're going to be getting involved in all the different reading and writing that is so fascinating, uh, fascinating part of this particular course that I uh, hope that you also find really interesting uh, and illuminating really about uh, uh, you know, things that are going on in our society and, and why they're, they're happening the way they are. All right. So I'm going to stop. This. Any questions on the modules or the front page or, or anything at all about what we've done so far? No questions? Okay, if uh, we're sure we don't have any questions, then I'm going to sign us out. And uh, as you know, I'm available. I already mentioned it. I'm just going to repeat it. Uh, you know, you can uh, call me, you can email me, we can chat, or we can Zoom. Uh, all those different things. And I, uh, I really value all that interaction with you. 
Uh, now that I'm not face to face, it gives me a chance to actually meet people one on one, which is really a fun part of the class. So I encourage that. So uh, if we're all done, I'm going to sign out. Warning. Okay. So goodbye, everybody. Good luck this semester.